and welcome to my channel. Vice Rhino here. Cirrus over there. Hi. We've got we've got sexy Cirrus back again. I I am not, trying the not experiments. That meat Cirrus isn't delightful. Oh my god. <laughs> it doesn't help that I I physically don't have my regular camera here because it's currently packed up in the gym bag with like my lavalier mics and all of my other recording equipment because I was having to travel to record today. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. But, yep. um, yeah, so, uh, everybody in the chat wants to know my opinion on the debate. So I will tell you, my opinion on the deb debate was, um, I stopped watching after the first, like, 20 to 30 minutes because it was just depressing because, like, JD Vance was actually, like, doing decently and Tim Walls was very clearly nervous. And, like, he was lying. Like, okay, Vance was lying the entire time. Like, I don't... Yeah. He, he was lying just as much as Trump was. Um, but, like, thinking of it from the perspective of someone who, um, like, someone who isn't tied into the politics of everything as tightly as we are... Um, they're not going to catch the lies. Yeah, they're not going to catch the lies. And Vance came across way more confident. And oftentimes people just have a tendency to believe the person who speaks with more confidence just because yep. human brains fucking suck. Me see strong men. Me like. Yeah. Put strong men on podium. Those strong men stand up. Passes yeah. the egg test. Now, like, that's saying, I don't think Walt did bad. I just think, like, he was clearly nervous. He's, like, he's, he's America's favorite dad is how I've heard him describe. He's like this big cuddly teddy bear kind of guy. Yeah. And it's like, that's not the kind of person that you would expect to do well in a debate. So like, it's fine. But also, um, also we have to keep in mind that like, I, I was talking to you about this a little bit offline, but um, the presidential debate has a minuscule effect on the election outcome. I can't imagine the vice presidential debate matters in the slightest. No, the vice presidential debate doesn't have anywhere near as much oomph like, in terms of like what it actually affects in the every, election outcome. Every election cycle, whenever they announce the vice presidential debate, when I hear that, my reaction is always like every single time. It's always been, oh, yeah, that's a thing that happens. Because I just forget that it even like it took Walls and Vance having the debate to remind me that, oh, yeah, wasn't that that one where Mike Pence like ate a fly? <laughs> Um, but yeah. Also, so. as of as of right now, where the polls are considered, uh, Democrats and Republicans are neck and neck on their approval of both candidates. Tim Walls, uh, in terms of who won the presidential debate, seventy two percent of Democrats believe that Walls did, and seventy one percent of Republicans believe that JD Vance did, and. Who do you think would be a better vice president? This is also split almost exactly down the middle. 92% is Tim Walls. 91% is for J.D. Vance. But that's 92% of Democrats and 91% of Republicans. So we see an almost even split and a bipartisan split here. Whereas when Trump had his debate with Harris, you saw damage control yeah. happening everywhere in the Republican Party. This one, we're actually seeing an even split amongst the parties where both parties think my guy did better. And that's <laughs> basically a return to political norms. Yeah, it's a return to I think to my guy won politics. because he said the things that I agree with in advance. Yeah, uh, in advance for J.D. Vance. <laughs> but I guess some some highlights from the debate, some stuff that definitely stuck out to me. So they opened up with a conversation about Israel and Lebanon. Mm -hmm. They didn't talk about Gaza, really. But there was just a Iran? quick... Uh, like the first, Iran... first question was, would you support was Israel Iran. doing a preemptive strike on Iran? On Iran. Yeah, sorry. I was thinking Lebanon because that's where a lot of the fighting's been happening yeah. right now. I'm very tired, everybody. Uh, for context, I've spent my time in, in Douglasville talking to the Democratic Party there, getting interviews over there, which y'all see we'll see on the channel here in like four or five days. But I'm I am spent and tired. I have been up all day in a literal film studio. Um, but that all said, 
Walls did what I expected him to do on his answer. He kind of waffled mm -hmm. on the answer really, really hard. And I, but I don't think he had many options, right? You can't no. give the response that most leftists wants you to have, which is, hey, maybe genocide's bad. Uh, you can't really do that in a debate when Iran is a classic enemy of the United States in general, irrespective of their support for places like Gaza, insofar as that goes. So he gave the response we kind of expected him to give. The response from Vance, though, was really, really weird. He started off with a fucking biography. Mm -hmm. yep. instead, of, instead of answering with, a, it was a yes or no question. Would you support a preemptive strike? And instead of answering that question, he starts by going, I, I want to answer the question, but first... I grew up in a working class family. I want to give a little bit of... I want to give an introduction to myself. Uh, I recognize a lot of Americans don't know who I am. I want to convince you tonight over the next 90 minutes... That, that I'm we not weird. Me, yeah, that it's that it's me and the couch wasn't real. Yeah, like, it, it, was, it was a bit weird, that pivot. Yeah, it felt... Very, very, very strange. But I mean, uh, on... I, fe I feel like the whole Israel thing wasn't handled well by anyone, the moderators included, because like, some, like, I don't know, maybe I'm too black and white on this. They just didn't fucking talk about Gaza well, at all. That wasn't brought up, yeah. which is weird. Well, yeah, there's that too, but it, like, maybe I'm just too black and white on this, sh this issue, but like, they phrase it like, oh, Israel is on the brink of war with Iran, and, uh... We're just ignoring I'm, I'm, what they've been doing I'm sitting, with Lebanon. Well, I'm sitting there like, didn't they just, didn't Iran just like launch a bunch of missiles at them like today? Yeah. This is like, correct me if I'm wrong, but like exchanging missile fire with another country is not the brink of war. That's just war. Like whether it's been officially declared or not, like whatever, that's a technicality. That's war. That's what war is. I think it's I, I think the the reason there's a technicality there is because Israel does have the Iron Dome defense system. So Yeah, so the when, the attack was mostly ineffective. Yeah, it, it gets mostly nullified and that's I think it, it comes down to there weren't as many casualties as there could have been therefore. But it's it's it in any common sense world, as much as I hate using that word, in any common sense world, yes, sending a bunch of fucking missiles at a country is, is a declaration of war. Yeah. Um so when the conversation moved to climate change, it felt even weirder because instead of talking about climate change, J.D. Vance pivoted to oh. America has too many jobs in China. I remember that. It was like, he's like, oh, yeah, it's Trump and I are for clean air. And the way we get clean air is by bringing manufacturing jobs back home. You're like putting putting a bunch of factories in the united states doesn't like now don't get me wrong there needs to be reformation to like make factories cleaner and well, a and lot of times the... one of the reasons they do go off like overseas is because of uh looser environmental regulations um mm -hmm. but like they literally are trying to like gut the epa to a point where it's not going to be like, they, haven't they already, like, like hasn't Trump the Supreme Court already declared that the EPA has no teeth? Well, Trump also yanked us out of the Paris Climate Accords yeah. when he was president. So, like, I, I don't want to hear any any weird conversations about if we bring America, like, there were three separate questions, but J.D. Vance answered with, well, if we bring American jobs back, that'll solve that problem. Like, Bringing those jobs back to America does not by default solve the problem of them being cleaner. And the way that he, yeah. he worded it, he described the countries that those factories were going to as dirty countries. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. he did make an appeal that I think most leftists would, would agree is a good one. Uh, he pointed out that a lot of those countries in, in, engage in slave labor in mm -hmm. order to keep their factories running, which is true. And it is a thing that needs to be solved. However, there is an issue. The issue is that historically it has been the deregulation of American business that has allowed the shipping out of those businesses to those other countries in the first place. So typically under Republican regimes, more of those jobs are able to be thrown overseas. More jobs oh. tend to get created you during the, Democratic leadership. Did you see the chart? that I, I don't know where it came from, so take it with a grain of salt, but it was like um, manufacturing jobs in the United States over time and it would like – 
listed which president was in charge and um mm-hmm. under trump it was like almost completely flat and as soon as <laughs> biden took over it like shot up through the roof this is like well yeah we had like eighty thousand if... new manufacturing jobs created under biden yeah like in general you get a democratic president in they have a better track record on this kind of stuff they are trusted less with the economy, propaganda is very, very good. Mm-hmm. But typically, you get the deficit going down. You get the, the national debt goes down when you have a Democrat in office. Jobs tend to go up when you have a Democrat in office. Um, so it's very, very weird that that Vance pivoted so hard on that every single time, especially when it had nothing to do with the question. Now, the, the part about the debate that I think swung it around, though, And it was the part that all of us were kind of waiting for with bated breath. It was when the certification of the 2020 election came up as a a point of question. Asked to J.D. Vance, you know, hey, you said you wouldn't have certified the election. Uh, You would have made another magical pull out of your ass way of getting the election certified. Uh, So do you stand by that? And J.D. Vance waffled on that. And then Tim Walls pressed him and said, no, hold on. Do who, do you think that Donald Trump lost the election? I did see that clip. And J.D. Vance responds, you're focused on the past. Mm-hmm. I'm focused on the future. And Walls immediately did exactly what he was supposed to do. He picked up on that and went, that is a damning non-answer. Yep. That is a very damning non-answer. And he, I think that moment of the debate is when things turned over in Walls' favor because he was able to point out, hey, you should be able to have confidence in your American elections. This is not how you inspire confidence in the American election system. This is how you sow chaos. Yeah. Um, I would just like to point out that my uh, Twitch chat has decided that uh, Shady Pants Vance is a nickname for him now. Shady Pants Vance? Yeah. There have been multiple okay. people kind of settled on that. They're having a little conversation about that. And like, I, I approve. I think that I think that fits. Yeah. Also, uh, one thing that Walls did very good later on in the debate as well was point out, and this is where I think it, it comes down to a unique aspect of how this debate goes. Because the both of the vice president picks one is not looking at an incumbent president. They're looking at a vice president who is trying to become president. And the other one is looking at a previously incumbent uh, president. So when we're talking about the policy issues that each person failed on, most of the things that you throw at Harris are actually going to stick to Biden and not Harris. But most of the things you... uh, I I did notice that in the part of the debate that I did watch was that every single answer was like, well, Harris has been in power for four years. How come she hasn't done anything? And of course... No, she hasn't. She's been a vice president. Yeah, and like, Tim Walls can't respond with, well, the vice president doesn't actually do anything except cast tie-breaking votes because he's arguing (laughs) that, like, it's a super important job that I would like you to hire me for. So you can't just... You can't go into the job interview saying, this job actually is nothing. Um, Yeah, you you can't do that. So, like, when... But, like, that, that is... It is the case that Harris has not been in charge of this administration She's the backup if something yeah. happens to the old man. When uh, when pressed on each of these issues, the common refrain that can be given, and, and Walls did not give it often enough because, again, he, he was not in a position where he could, is that that's not a Harris issue, that's a Biden issue. Yes, Harris shares in that, but... That's like saying she's, that Pence she's not the sh- one driving the boat right now. Yeah, she's not the one driving the boat. She is the one shoveling coal into the engine, hoping that it's going in the right direction. Whereas when Walls got to talk about policies that Trump failed on, he got to say things like Donald Trump had four years. He had four years to build you a big, beautiful wall and make Mexico pay for it. And less than 2% of that wall ever even got built. And Mexico didn't pay a dime towards it. But here we are again nine years afterwards and y'all are doing the same dehumanizing song and dance trying to get this thing built that's not going to solve the problem and wasn't even built the first time when you promised it drew harrison says the vp also chairs the senate is that why is that why vance is going for this job he just heard that there was a chair (laughs) involved oh my god there's a chair someone's got to tell him maybe he'll drop out it's like that's not what chair means in this context 
also uh, Walls. Again, this is in the latter half of the debate where Walls is performing better. J.D. Vance tried to say that uh, Donald Trump was one of the best bipartisan presidents that we've ever had, and I oh. think that's. Ki- and I think that's it's it's carryover from Biden rhetoric, right? Because when Biden got into office, he fought very, very hard on the platform of I'm not a Democratic president. I'm an American president. That was a that's a thing that he yep. ran on that Trump stole retroactively. And I think J.D. Vance oh. during his debate prep. Trump takes so much credit from both Biden and uh, Obama, like good things that happened on either end of his presidency. He's just like, yeah, no, that was me. I did that. It was me, not Obama. So when he tried to bring that up, that, you know, Trump was so good on bipartisanship, Walls was able to point out that Trump's, you know, one of the major things Trump did was kill a bipartisan immigration bill. Mm -hmm. One that, like, it it just went to his office and Trump killed it despite both sides agreeing on it. Um, And Walls then goes and says, you know, we could have come together and solved this issue. But Donald Trump decided that it was better to continue to make it an issue because he'd rather run on the issue than solve the issue. And drilling into that really, really hard, I think, was a very, very good strategy. It definitely helped pivot him better in the latter half of the debate when it it really did not begin that great for him. Also, Walls owned the Christian audience uh, very, very quickly. Yeah, Uh, he brought up Matthew Matthew 25. Yeah, 2540. Yeah. When he brought up Matthew 2540. So that was another very, very good thing for him to do. Because And he did it preemptively. I'm glad he didn't mm-hmm. do it as a response. Because when Biden does this, typically he has to do it as a response. Bring up his Catholicism as a response to somebody saying, this isn't the Christian thing to do or whatever. Tim Walls was able to bring it up immediately and go, I'm going to head this off at the pass. That was a good, that was a good strategy thing for me. I did... Yeah, appreciate that. Even as an atheist, but looking at this from the majority of people in the United States are still Christian. This is the strategy. These are the people that you need to convince to vote for you. God fucking damn it. (laughs) Rosina says, uh, didn't you hear Trump captains holding prices at $35? That's one of the policies that I was talking about earlier that came. um, That one was Biden, right? Yeah, the thirty-five dollar one yeah. is Biden, and then uh, uh, Harris is running on a continuation of it that will also include a two thousand dollar cap on medicine and an eight hundred dollar decrease in yearly uh, medication costs or yearly uh, insurance costs. Uh, have you all considered just doing single payer public health care for all? So, we have the Democratic Party has tried to run on that once, and that was w- when Bernie Sanders was a primary candidate. That was one of the things he ran on, and. Uh, we can mince words about Bernie getting screwed by the Democratic Party. Um, I I am perfectly willing to accept that that is one of the things that probably happened. But uh, as of I, right now, I yeah, think I the feel, party... I feel like in the climate at the time, even if Bernie hadn't gotten railroaded by the party, which I'm not denying that he did, but even if he hadn't, he probably wouldn't have won that election. Yeah, I, I, think that the, I think the Democratic Party at large, as much as I hate to say this, I think they see that healthcare is an issue that people care about, but they care about it within the confines of what they understand, and they understand the insurance market. They don't understand single-payer, which is stupid. It's insurance that's way fucking cheaper. It. I I understand. We've discussed this here before. I pay $700 a year for my family of four. Yes, I know yeah. I have, there's seven people in my family right now, but because we file our taxes separately, that's I don't pay for her health care. Yeah, well, like I, but I do I because that's how taxes you. work. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. It would be a better system. I think that the Democratic Party as a whole right now are choosing not to run on that, but to run mostly on abortion, which they wouldn't have to run on if they codified it. Turns out Democrats actually took some pretty good strides in codifying uh, Obergfell. It's one of the reasons why we're not actually worried about that being stripped away anymore. Codifying Roe? Because wasn't... Oh, no. no Oberg, okay, no, no, sorry. You said Obergefell. Yeah, you said Obergefell and my head heard Dobbs. Right, I was like, right, right. No, no, I was no. like that's the bad one, isn't it? It's like, nope, nope, that's no, the gay we, marriage one. Yeah, we got... We, we actually did get that, for the most part, codified. So we don't have to worry about that going away under anybody else's presidency the way that Roe fell. So I, I do have a modicum of confidence... Not a lot, but a little bit of confidence that the Democratic Party will go, oh, we should probably 
codify Roe. We should probably do something to make this protected at the federal level now. Um, but right now they're choosing to run on the issue and not run on on the medicine issue, which sucks. I want them fighting for my medicine, but I, I recognize this is the corner that the Republicans painted them in. Um, though, as of right now, I am I am still not too terribly worried about Trump winning. The polls have things kind of neck and neck in most yeah. states, but I also kind of expect that. Yeah, and, Harris is ahead in the swing states. And, and that's I the think part that I care about. The, like, this is a few days old, so it might no longer be accurate, but the last thing I heard was Wisconsin was the primary battleground state that, like, will be the deciding factor, and Harris was ahead by, like, two or three points. Mm. So, like... But, like, that that's, that's one of those weird things, like... People that are in favor of the electoral college will be like, oh, we can't just let all the people that live in the urban areas decide everything and oh, well. like fuck all the rest of us. But it's like, okay, but like you're just trading like these few cities with big populations for these few states with small populations. Like it, it's still a minority of people holding the rest of the nation hostage, except if it's if there's no elef electoral college, it's just popular vote, then um everybody's vote is at least equal like and like who's to say like right now if you're a republican living in new york city you are completely disenfranchised mm -hmm. because republicans voting in new york not gonna fucking matter new york's going blue because new york goes blue get rid of the electoral college though and suddenly the republicans in new york have a lot more power so like getting rid of the electoral college is good for everybody except it'd be really good for the democrats because they always win the popular vote in the last like what 20 years yeah like al gore won the popular vote hillary clinton won the popular vote <clears throat> ironically biden won the popular vote too mm -hmm. uh rosina says i pay 968 per month for all of my medical insurances as a single person via cobra yeah i could not fathom paying that much because i don't have that much money um god i'm trying to think if there's anything else from the debate that really stuck out to me really i know that there was the point where they both got grilled on stuff that they said previously that turned out to be wrong so one of them was like walls being in china during the tiananmen square incident oh yeah, yeah. and walls had to point out that like hey i brought classes there all the time um i'm not saying that i was correct in saying those specific words but i brought my class to China multiple times, sometimes around some of these events. Yeah. That's not the same thing as me being there during the event, I understand, but like that was his position there. And then uh, for Vance, when Vance was told, like the direct thing afterwards was Vance being told, hey, what about you with your words you said about Donald Trump? And he just started off by going, I was wrong, first of all. I believe what the media story said about Donald Trump but they were all fabrications. Donald Trump delivered for the American people. Fuck uh, when they when He's they got such back a fucking to sellout. when they got back to Roe v. Wade, though, uh, that's where I that's another area where I think Walls was way way stronger on because Vance did his usual song and dance of saying, "Well, the rape is inconvenient." Well, yeah, because like the the Republicans have an issue with abortion now that Roe is overturned, um, because. They know abortion is an issue that loses voters massively in every state. Like every time it's been up for vote in any state, even the reddest of red states, abortion access always wins. It's yep. wildly popular. Everybody wants it. Republicans and Dem Democrats, just like Trump says, is the exact opposite of the case that everybody wants it to be a state decision. It's like, no, no, no it's literally the exact opposite. That everybody just wants Roe versus Wade to be back in effect. Um, but. They also know that their hardcore MAGA base, their main constituency, that like the people that are going to vote for them the most consistently are also anti-abortion. Yeah. So like when it's those a... are the main part of your base, you can't alienate them by saying, oh, no, I am actually pro-abortion. You have to like walk the line to pretend like you care about bodily autonomy while still making it clear to these guys that, oh, no, 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 it's OK. I do still plan on curtailing women's rights. Yeah, they, they literally have to pretend. They have to pretend that this is the best issue in the entire world because their main voting base, the the extremists that are radicalized to vote for them no matter what, 
are going to come out and vote. And if they don't, if they don't stick to the election was a fraud, if they don't stick to abortion rights are bad, if they don't stick to those things, they lose the extremist vote, as shown when Nicholas Fuentes, of all people, yep. decided to do his whole, there are 10,000 people here who God won't be it, voting for you. Out of the hat. But I think that's indicative of a lot of people who, when they see that their their based extremist god emperor isn't holding to all of his promises, they're willing to withhold their votes there. So I, for one, hope to see moderate Donald Trump because moderate Donald Trump ironically loses more votes right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, he he posted on... Uh... I forget whether it was Truth Social or Twitter, but he went on one of his all caps rants being like, no, if there was an abortion ban on my desk, I would veto it. And like, okay, first off, I don't believe you. Second off, you just alienated a bunch of people that don't want you to veto that. Yeah. So good. Keep it up. Um, <sighs> anyway, I'm a little bit annoyed at how well that subject would transition, would, uh, segue into our first news story because we haven't gotten to the news items that we're not covering yet. And some of these were too interesting for me to pass up, so I have to put the segue aside and make it more awkward. Um, so first off, in the news stories that we're not covering, um, my anonymous source sent me an article. Uh, you remember that tweet where Mike Lindell was advertising his pillows for fourteen eighty eight? The fourteen eighty eight one, yeah. Yeah. So um, how'd that go for him? There was some follow up on that. Uh, he claimed that he didn't know what fourteen eighty eight meant when Bullshit. his pillows were priced that way. And then, uh, and then when they asked him about it, he denied that he's a Nazi, but he followed that up by saying, direct quote, some media called me and said, are you going to apologize and take it down? I said, no, I'm going to double down. So he claimed to not know what it meant, claimed to not be a Nazi. And then when he found out it was a Nazi dog whistle, he was like, yeah, OK, I'm going to still do that. Like, what the fuck? He's such a fucking idiot. Jeez, that uh, that's okay. This is why he lost to like a ten year old in a debate. Come on, the kid was twelve. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what? Those two years made a huge difference. I, having kids in that age group, I can tell you, they can make a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, make a huge difference in people's opinions of Mike Lindell. <laughs> Uh, there was another story sent to me that uh, college student voting rates are uh, at a record high. 50% um, of college students voted in the 2020 election compared to a typical 15 to 20% for that age bracket. Um, and this high turnout is being driven by things like climate change, reproductive rights, and LGBTQ rights, which Imagine. doesn't bode well for Republicans, since those are all things they're against. Well, I mean, they're not against climate change. They're against doing anything to stop it. Look, if you just have okay, actually, this is one thing I wanted to talk about a little bit more. Um, that I, I forgot about this. Um, so the thing with climate change, the thing with climate change, yes, having a newly industrialized a, uh, nations producing a lot of our goods. One of the slave labor is a huge problem with that. Uh, that needs to be dealt with. Another problem is that historically. When a nation becomes industrialized, their carbon footprint increases. However, also historically, the longer they stay industrialized, the more their carbon footprint decreases mm -hmm. as their technology develops and gets more efficient. This is a thing that ha this is how it uh, the carbon footprint in America was decreased. We got better at doing this thing. We got more. We got better at doing regulations for it. We got better at having. Uh, Nucle like nuclear power plants ended up expanding here to a degree. It's kind of stalled a bit now, but a lot of our practices improved. And that's a thing that you can have in those nations. There's nothing wrong with having industrialized nations that we can trade with. Yeah, mm -hmm. we need to have more jobs in America for people because people can't afford fucking milk right now. But there's nothing wrong with other nations it being import-export partners with us. That prevents us from going to war with more people. Yeah. In fact, actually, one of the nations that we are an import-export partner with, uh, Taiwan, there have been Republicans who have argued that the minute that we are able to manufacture the chipsets 
that we get from Taiwan, uh, we will start abandoning them and then let, letting China take them over because we lose them as an import export partner once we are the only ones who are manufacturing them so there's actual fucking political ramifications to that that are very very bothersome i remember there was something else on that that was on my mind yeah no well that that tracks um and last up on the stories that we're not covering uh this this one was just like i wanted to cover it as a main story but there's, there's just not enough meat there um there's a there's an unmarried child free Republican candidate that uh, borrowed a, uh, his friend's wife and children for a campaign photo to pretend what? that they were his, so that he could seem more relatable. He, he borrowed their wife and kids. Isn't that just isn't that just polyamory with extra steps? I only if they're doing stuff. <laughs> I'm just like it's it's just. Because you know he's running for an office with the party with the where the vice presidential candidate is on record as saying that people without children don't have a stake in the future of the country, so they don't deserve to vote. Mm -hmm. So he's got to present as a family man when he's not. Now, to be fair, he is engaged to someone like he's got a fiance, and they just don't have kids yet, or whatever. So, like, whatever. <laughs> but like the fact that he felt the need to pretend to have a wife and kids. It just, it's so, it's so telling of the Republican mindset. Like, it's, it's, it, it's, it's weird. Okay, so like. They don't, they don't care what, about the substance. They just want the appearance. So like, when I was talking with the, the Democratic Ooh, campaign, uh, when I was talking with the people in Douglasville who, who are in charge of that on both the local side and the Harris Wall side, every single one of them, I referred to my channel. Hey. This is the channel where I'm going to be doing stuff. I normally use a VTuber avatar. I talk with people through that avatar a lot, and it gives me a niche audience that not a lot of people end up reaching to. And irrespective of the fact that that avatar was brought on after years of other stuff happening, there are still people who came here for the avatar first, weirdly, and then stayed for the politics. You, which you is say a, weirdly, but I know your audience. It's, it's fucking fascinating to me, but not in the way you think. Um, so... It's it strikes me as so awkward that somebody would be so paranoid about their image and go, no, 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 I have to hide the fact that I too am childless cat lady. I have to hide that fact or Daddy Vance won't like me. 30 to 50 annoyingly feral Peckery's newsletters said uh, sent a two dollar super chat said funding Cirrus Mandarin lessons to apologize. Um, I appreciate that, but uh, th this is my channel. You have You're... to go to Cirrus's channel to fund Cirrus's stuff. I will take yeah, your $2. I, I don't get money I, from Rhino's channel, will, and Rhino doesn't get money from my channel. I will use them for not Mandarin lessons. I will, you, okay, let's be real. You'll I'm gonna use, them for, Mandarin them. You're gonna gonna use to, them for Mandarin Orange. You're going to use them for Mandarin Oranges. I, probably, actually. My partner is on a Mandarin Orange kick, so that's not outside the realm of possibility There you go. All. They're great for breakfast. I love oranges for breakfast. You, you miss out when you only hear my side of the conversation, dear. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was very confused as to why we were suddenly talking about oranges. Boy, Dilly says, I came because I saw your clips on YouTube. Then I learned that you were friends with Rhino, who I already watched. Hey, I also do stuff because I watched Rhino. Turns out. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned that I mentioned it all the time. So now I'm going to mention it more because you've called attention to it. Well, I'm also not mentioning things because I don't know if I'm allowed to mention things. Like about, what? You, well, the things that we were talking about before. Well, well, like in, for lack of a better term, let's call it the green room before we went live. The is it the CNN stuff? Yeah. Oh, my audience already knows about all that. Yeah, but I don't know that, so I'm not okay, just so, going to assume that I can like just blur so, out your career plans on my so channel. Quick, so a quick announcement for everybody who may not be aware: uh, I am currently doing a massive job hunt where I am not only putting in applications for places like CNN and various places like Outreach, trying to get involved in their uh, in the organizing side of canvassing. Uh, I am also trying to further my voice acting career. I've already done a video talking about that a little bit. Uh, Overton is still in development. I don't know when exactly it's going to be coming out because there's a lot of things that are going involved in there. Uh, but I've also taken on a 
producer role uh, for part of the development of Overton for some of the merchandising for it so that I can get experience doing that as well so that my resumes look better. I've also, like I've been saying, uh, been talking with the local people who've been running uh, some of the Democratic campaign stuff. So uh, this Monday, I will be doing a stream with the Georgia representative of District 3 to talk about Project 2025, because while my project on... Project 2025 has stalled because I've hit the wall where my expertise just isn't there. And unlike GE and Caitlin, I don't have their wealth of knowledge to rip through the damn thing. So I've grabbed somebody who is an expert on it and does educate people on it and is also a representative in my state, actually in Georgia Congress, who's going to be coming on my channel to talk about her expertise there. Uh, I also have a video coming out soon where I'm talking uh, uh, to... Uh, Chairman Kelly, who used to be one of the chairmen in Douglasville, Georgia. So I'm getting interviews with people okay. who know more about how this shit works. There. So, cool. Now everybody knows everything. So, um, <laughs> yeah, just in, in my head, I'm picturing like, I know you, like when you have your congressional person on your, I imagine you're going to be in meat space, sir. I'm going to be in meat space, sir. Yeah, so, because like, I was like, um, just imagining like a serious politician popping onto the stream and they say you and your cat girl titty outfit and me and my wizard hat. And I'm just like, that's a good way to never get a politician to come onto your show ever again. 100%. That, that is. That is a way of doing that. Hello. <laughs> Rosina says, but, uh, yay, Sirs has concrete goals slash uh, jealousy. Um, and Jester Lord of Fools has joined at the basic level. So welcome, Jester Lord of Fools. Hello. Yeah, basic. Um, yeah, no. So Sirs and I were talking about that before the stream. And I was and like. He brought up like, oh, no, I wouldn't have done any of this if I wasn't inspired by your channel. And I'm, I'm sitting here like, and yet you are the one who is moving up in the world career wise. And I was like, I'm not I'm not really like putting in a, <laughs> putting in job applications. is okay. not moving up in the progress world. only is saying, am I not a serious enough politician? Yes, you are. You are a serious politician. <laughs> when you win your election, you are welcome to come on as an interview. Hell, maybe we can do that at some point anyway. I, I think that would be a good idea, honestly. There's actually a, a really cool story there of, like, person who got involved in YouTube politics yeah. just watching that content uh, going and getting elected and then starting starting to do the work. Like, that's there's actually a, a big story there. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I think you've emailed me before, so I'll try to find your email address and I'll try to remember to email you. Um, but if Alex not, has wit. That you're, Yep. I know, I know, they have emailed me, so I'll be able to find it. Um, anyway, shall we uh, shall we do the news stories that we actually came here for? Sure, absolutely, I mean, now that we're I was, done talking I was here... about my concrete goals. I would... <laughs> <sighs> no, it's not... I'm, I'm trying to think of a pun to do with, like, limestone or rocks or anything, and it's just nothing's happening. Are you, are you saying that no joke's solidified? Yeah. That that wasn't a very good one, but that's better than what I came up with. So you can have it. I'm sorry, I don't I don't have good enough flow for that. <laughs> you know, like liquid concrete. <sighs> yes, thank you. I I got that. Thank you. I'm glad you got it. You, you, you think I just got <laughs> rocks for brains? <gasps> they might be mixed into the concrete. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just imagining the big troll from Never Ending Story. Yummy limestone. <laughs> Oh, they look like good, big, strong hands, don't they? <laughs> hey, just wanted to give a quick thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who help keep me afloat and help keep this channel going. YouTube and Twitch are wonderful platforms, but at the end of the day, stability is not one of their strong suits. If you want to support my channel, then obviously Patreon is one of the best ways of doing that. Link is in the description. But I do want to personally thank everybody who has contributed to the channel. Those people would be Red Joker, Purple Poundini, Gemption, Brits Creek, Jupe the Malignant, Michael, Ravalern, Mabbity Babbity, Astral Frontier, Autumn and Angel, Nixie Chan, Agamotto, Victorian Alchemist, Sagitt- I'm not saying the last part of that, and you know that! Arctan Arc Lassier, Curatorian, Dren Hadamata, Jordan M, John L, Lord Bleck, Smiling Game Master, and Fire Shard. And everyone else who supports my channel and lets me do what I do 
full time. This is a dream job of mine that I never believed that I would be able to take full time. And with your help, I've been able to do it. So thank you so, so very much for that. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you all enjoy and I hope you all are having a wonderful time. I will see you all in the next one, hopefully.